Hello everyone. We're getting ready to look up today with a new Uplook video, discussing one of our top 10 lists. You can like the video, subscribe, and make sure to ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Today's topic, 10 ways to practically love people. This is the new command the Lord Jesus gave the night he gathered with his own in the upper room. Love one another as I have loved you. He said, if the greatest thing is love, and if love is of God, this is a sure way we can live godly in this present world. So let's look at some practical ways to live the life of love. Here we go. Now, I think number one is kind of a foundation to the rest of these, and it is to think about others. Seems pretty obvious, but uh, sometimes we hear that, I'm sorry, I just didn't think, and that's not good enough. Uh, Hebrews 10.24 says, let's consider one another to stir up love and good works. And one of the most important things we can do is just thinking about the people around us and what their needs might be and how I can practically love them. And number two follows nicely, to be aware of other people. Right. Uh, in Isaiah 61 and verse 1, uh, the Lord takes up this verse, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to do certain things. And there he talks about the sad, the lonely, the insecure, the, the downtrodden, the burdened. And uh, they're everywhere. We can, if we have eyes to see, there are people who have needs everywhere. So uh, he says, don't just love the lovable. Uh, in Matthew 5, 46, he says, even the crooks do that. Uh, there's, no, there's no benefit in that. He says in chapter, Matthew chapter 5, and verse 46, if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Don't even the tax collectors do the same. So uh, it's a wonderful thing to be able to love people but God has given us the supernatural capacity to even love the unlovable. Good. Number three is to be a good listener. I think it's good to have some uh, diagnostic questions to ask people, to ask people about their family, to ask them about their own spiritual needs at the time, things you can pray for. Uh, it's good to inquire, but then it's good to sit and listen. And especially people who are shut-ins or people who may be a little different, don't have a lot of friends, uh, they have all these pent-up words they want to use. And while we may be very busy, it's our time then to let them talk and to listen. It's very important to do that. Yeah, that's a good skill to practice. Mm -hmm. uh, as is uh, number four, look for opportunities to serve and meet needs. Sometimes it's as little as a word of encouragement, but sometimes we may be able to fix things, especially widows have things around the house their husbands used to do, a leaky faucet or a squeaky door, whatever it might be. It may be yard work. There, there are opportunities to uh, work with Young mothers, give them a break now and again. Some of the single gals could see this as a ministry to give a young couple an opportunity for an evening out and say, look, I'm not going to charge you for babysitting. I just want to do this as a ministry. It may be special needs parents who need some, some people with a little more skill level to care for their children so they get a break now and again. My son and daughter-in-law used to go to seniors and say to them, how would you like it if you make up a menu, uh, we'll cook the meal, and you have your friends over, and we'll clean up afterwards, and you just have an evening to visit with your friend? This is the sort of thing that love does. Our next one is very important. It's to pray regularly, intelligently, and confidentially for others. Right. If we're going to have some sort of a relationship with people, we have to keep in touch. And we need to know how things are going day by day. We live in a world that is becoming increasingly high tech, but low touch. And we need to turn that around sometimes and be a little more in touch with people 
so that we do know what they're going through. And if someone is going to be a burden sharer with me so that I can help be a burden bearer with them, I've got to learn to keep my mouth shut. I have to be confidential. I have to be discreet. As soon as I start sharing their burdens and it starts getting around, that's the end of the opportunities that they're going to take to share their problems with me. So learn to be confidential if you expect to have a ministry of people caring, uh, expressing their burdens to you so you can care for them. And our next one, uh, I think, goes really well with that being consistent and compassionate in your care. Sometimes people aren't going to express how thankful they are, especially in the early days. Some people have been through trauma, and it's hard for them to express their love and gratitude. And so for a fair bit in the early stages of working with hurting people, you're going to get very little back. It's going to be a bit like uh, hugging a telephone pole because they just don't have anything to give. And if you bail out on them just because they can't respond back to you, you're not really loving them in the way Christ loves us. So let's remember that love endures all things. Love doesn't give up. And love keeps doing things even when people don't say thanks. I remember years ago I was down in Georgia and uh, T.S. Morgan and I were going visiting and in the middle of the day he stopped and said, oh I've got to get home. He went back and he had a little insulated container that he would put some cold drink in and some cups for the garbage men. And they, they knew that they could stop at his house any day that they were traveling and it would be waiting for them along with a little bit of gospel literature. And it's that faithful consistency in love that makes the difference, not just once in a while sort of drive by charity. Our number seven on the list is keep your promises or else don't make them. All right. Long-term relationships are based on trust. And once you lose trust, it's hard to get it back again. So um, the scripture says that uh, you should keep your promise even to your own hurt. You make a promise and then it turns out to be very expensive. Go through with it. God says that's something I love when you do keep your promise even to your own hurt. I feel like that idea isn't very emphasized today, so I'm glad it made our list. Number eight, observe what brings them joy and follow suit. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes what happens is that we give to people the things that we want, the things that we like. I remember in my early marriage, my wife had a number of children to care for and, and I made her a nice garden out in the back. Well, that was the last thing she wanted. She had no time for gardens. She was raising kids. That was something I thought she would like. What I needed to do was learn what would be helpful to her and respond to uh, what she needed. And people talk about the different love languages, whatever you make of that. The fact is that everybody's different and we need to understand people in order to love them as they need to be loved. Our number nine is, as friendship grows, graciously speak the truth with their good at heart. Both on the positive and the negative side. Don't wait to say nice things at the funeral. Say it while it will do some good. But at the same time, when I love someone, I care about them and I shouldn't let them wander into things that are dangerous for them. And so sometimes love risks and love says in grace, in kindness, says the things they need to hear that maybe nobody else will tell them. So it's, it's important for us, the scripture says in Proverbs 27, 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend. And uh, hopefully we're hurting to heal for the same reason that a surgeon does his work. We want to help these people and sometimes we have to risk that love in order to accomplish what God lays on our heart to do. I think that's really helpful, especially with um, a lot of what is known as the internet culture today and how mm. people uh, seem to attack others instead of, like you put it with the surgeon, heal and help others. Mm. 
Uh, our last one, number 10, decorate life, make happy memories together. You know, it's a sad world and there are a lot of tough things. And anytime we can uh, celebrate little victories, enjoy the today, enjoy the now. As they say, uh, today is a gift, that's why they call it the present. So uh, sometimes we can rush by in life and not stop to smell the flowers. And so I think it's good for us when we think about the needs of people around us, uh, the heartaches, the loneliness, the, the challenges that people are facing. Sometimes we look at people and we envy them, but if we really knew their lives, we'd maybe pray for them, maybe want to help them. So the more I get to know people, the more I understand the aching hearts that are around us. And what a wonderful opportunity it is to show some of the love of Christ to people in their need. Charles Spurgeon said, you go in for ministering to broken hearts, you'll never be out of business. And that's certainly the case in this area. Learning to love people is learning to be God-like because God is a lover of people.